pterosaurs, ancient wings. Look up for a second. Picture a windy afternoon on the coast, laundry snapping on a line, gulls complaining at the harbor, sunlight blinking off windows. A long shadow glides over the street, roof to roof, field to field quiet as a held breath. Not a plane, not a kite. It banks, tilts a membrane the size of a garage door, and rides a stairway of hot air. You're looking at something ancient with a brand new passport, a pterosaur, and if they'd never gone extinct, our world wouldn't just look different. It would feel different especially to anyone who spends time under open sky. First things first, names. Pterodactyl is the movie label for one branch. The true umbrella is pterosaurs, flying reptiles, not dinosaurs. They were the first vertebrates to figure out powered flight. Their wings weren't feathers. They were living sails, skin, and muscles stretched from the body to a super long fourth finger, like your hand turned into a hang glider. Many were fuzzy with a thin coat of hair-like fibers, which means they ran warm metabolisms, and they didn't leap like birds. They vaulted, four limbs down, compress, explode an athletic pole vault into clean air, then those membranes bite the wind, and the horizon becomes a highway. Now bring them home to the places you know. In the US, imagine the Everglades at dusk, a heat haze over Texas prairie, Pacific updrafts ripping past the cliffs at Big Sur, warm river mouths along the Carolinas, salmon estuaries in the Pacific Northwest. In Europe, think of the Wadden Sea and the Dutch polders, the Camargo's pink salt lagoons in France, Spain's Doñana marshes, Portugal's Ria Formosa, Scotland's sea locks and heather slopes, the great mirror of the Danube Delta. Anywhere the sky opens and thermals breathe, they'd be there, turning invisible weather into fuel. Here's the part that gets personal. Airports near wetlands would learn new habits wildlife radars tweaked from bird to pterosaur. Approach patterns nudged away from known soaring lanes. High tension lines and tram cables would get bright markers, so big wings see them in time. Wind farms from the North Sea to West Texas would add sky corridors, leaving open lanes for migration days when the air feels like a moving sidewalk. Cities would become launch pads. On August afternoons in Phoenix, Madrid, LA, Athens, the air above hot roofs boils up, you'd spot them circling like kites that figured out lift long before the rights did. What about your neighborhood? A kid in Brighton tossing bread to ducks might go still as a long beak shadows the pond, then laugh when the dragon ignores the bread and plucks a fat grasshopper off the bank. A surfer in Santa Cruz looks up between sets and sees one silently cruising the length of the beach. A hiker in the highlands hears a deep paper wing woof as something large slides over the ridge and is gone. Moments small, local, sticky in memory. Farms and fisheries would adapt fast. European carp ponds get overhead netting. Louisiana crawfish farms string flags to break up glide paths. Norwegian sea pens add extra floats and shimmering tapes to make the water busy from above. Backyard chicken keepers in Surrey or Wisconsin build simple shelters, so there's always a roof to dash under. You grumble at first, then post a phone clip, and by morning your comments are full of people telling their own, I looked up and stories. If you're picturing giant dive bombers stealing every fish in sight, breathe. Not all pterosaurs hunted like gulls. Many of the big long-necked forms think giraffe tall, crane graceful were ground stalkers. They'd stride dry flats in grass, scan for movement the size of a mouse or frog, snap, swallow, move on. Out over water, long-winged cousins would do what albatrosses do, spend most of the day not flapping, just tipping and carving, saving their energy for the exact moment it matters. They're athletes, but they're also accountants every wing beat must pay back. Would they be a problem? Sometimes, sure. A big animal in our airspace means rules. No drones near nesting ledges. Seasonal closures on a few cliff paths. Please do not feed the pterosaurs signs next to don't feed the gulls. The flip side is the quiet good they do. Like vultures, some would clean up carrion at the marsh edge, trimming disease risk. In orchards and vineyards, they'd pinch back outbreaks of big insects. In open country, their presence would push some prey to stay moving, which keeps a food web honest. 
the sky feels wilder and healthier. Science would chase them with delight. That four-limb launch becomes a blueprint for robots that can vault into flight from a standstill. Membrane wings teach engineers to build ultralight drones that sip watts, but travel for miles on thermals. The strange marriage of crest and beak turns into lessons for passive gust sensors and weight-saving trusses in green buildings. Kids who grew up watching them would sketch better planes, better bridges, better kites. Curiosity scales. There's a harder truth, too. We'd be the reason they succeed or fail this time. The asteroid ended their first run. Now it's the slow asteroids we built. Wires, glass, night lighting, plastic, empty seas. We know how to help. Turn off the lantern towers during migration peaks. Put markers on the lines that cut through open country. Keep the dirtiest trash out of the deltas. Protect the places where hot air rises in clean columns and where a runway of packed sand lets a tired animal land and rest. You don't have to love fossils to love the idea that a city can share its sky. If you did meet one up close, your survival guide is mostly manners. Give big wings room to turn. Don't crowd with drones. They read a swarm of buzzing toys as a storm you made on purpose. If you boat under cliffs in Greece or Maine, keep your distance from obvious ledges. That first morning sun is how a chick lives through a chilly day. And if a giant silhouette cruises over your soccer field and hovers on a column of warmth, just enjoy it. Sometimes you don't need to fix the moment. You just need to feel it. So yes, pterosaurs would bring hassles insurance clauses, new signs, a few closed trails in July, but they'd bring back something we lost without noticing. The reflex to look up, to read clouds with your skin, to point and grin with strangers because something impossible just threaded the wind over your street. A world that still has surprises in the daylight is a world that gets your heart rate up in a good way. If the idea of that makes your chest feel a size bigger, stick around. Drop a comment about where you think they'd show up first Jersey Shore, the Camargue, the Oregon Dunes, and tell us your I looked up and moment. Sub so you don't miss what's next. Because in the next episode, We'll take these skywalkers into a city heat wave and see who blinks first, glass and steel, or a creature built to fold wind in its hands. Until then, one favor. Next time you step outside, give the sky a second. It might be busier than you remember.